Welcome everyone. So glad you could join us today. Um, we're very excited for this third in our series of introductions to the IQ panel for our United Kingdom uh, market. We are very excited to talk about uh, some technical tips and tricks that are going to really help you as you're working to install the system, um, learning some of the, the secrets that technicians have been doing here uh, in North America for quite a while. My name is Jeremy McLaren. I run marketing uh, globally for Johnson Controls and uh, very excited to have Jeremy Blakeney, who um, runs our technical account management uh, globally as well. So um, looking forward to you know, your participation today. One of the things we'd like to do um, before we begin is get you participating right now uh, by starting out with a poll. Uh, I'd like to know, are you currently a Qualsys customer? Um, and you know, it's simple answers, yes or not yet. Uh, we believe that eventually maybe all of you will We'll look at our platform and be serious about it. But maybe many of you are already using us, which is excellent. And we're excited to see, um, you know, what you make of the platform, how you've appreciated it. Uh, we'll have an opportunity for you to participate with uh, us through the chat um, in our GoToWebinar platform. So after we close this poll, I want you guys to all find that chat for me. Um, and, you know, send me a little message. Where are you calling in from? You know, are you calling in from your phone or your laptop or your desktop computer? Are you calling in from the office or from, uh, from you know, your car or maybe you're at home working from home in your home office? Um, very curious to know where you're calling in from. I personally am based in our Utah office in the USA, um, hence the weird accent. And, uh, you know, we've got Jeremy Blakeney, who's also based in the Utah office, and we've got many of us based in our San Jose office as well. We also have on the line uh, Tomer, who runs marketing for the European region, who's based in Tel Aviv. Um, and then we also have Paul, who's based there in the UK, uh, who runs our sales in the United Kingdom. So um, excited to have a full compliment on today. But find that chat section, find that that question, uh, and let me know where you're calling in from. Um, and while you're finding that, I'm going to ask a second poll uh, question. Curious to know what product lines you're currently using for your residential installs. You know, are you using um, you know, and choose all that apply here. You know, are you using Pyronix, uh, Texacom, Ajax, Orasec, um, or Bisonic or others? So, you know, if you're not using a Qualsys IQ panel, um, you know, which platforms are you using um, outside of that? It looks like a, a vast majority so far are saying Bisonic and other, but there's a little bit of Texacom, a little bit of Pyronix. Um, we got some people chiming into the chat here. Jonathan, welcome from um, Luton, United Kingdom. Did I say Luton? Is that is that how you pronounce that? Um, and Eric uh, yes. in the Old Harlow. So great. Uh, old, old Harlow co working from his office. So uh, please find, find that chat section and let us know where you're calling in from. Uh, Mike is here from on his laptop from a very wet Whitstable. <laughs> very nice. Very nice. It's nice and dry here in the, in the States, uh, at least in our particular location. We haven't had snow or rain in probably three weeks. Um, looking forward to some more snow so I can enjoy some of those ski slopes. It's one of the things Utah is, is famous for um, globally is to have a, a, a great place to ski. In fact, I'm going to go try out the ski slopes this afternoon after, after work, and hopefully uh, there's a little bit of snow I can enjoy. Um, our second poll is which product lines do you use for uh, commercial and small business? Uh, again, similar responses, Castle or Pyronix, Texacom, Ajax, Orasec, or something else. And maybe, again, that, that could be Bisonic or something else. Um, Dave calling in from Birmingham, uh, United Kingdom. Thanks for joining us, Dave. And Nathan from Soham, Cambridgeshire. Excellent. Glad you're here. With some great people on the line today. And we've got lots and lots on the line. There's actually, um, you know, almost 100 people on the line so far and more are chopping in every minute. So, you know, part of our doing these polls is helping to give everyone a chance to um, go into uh, or get in and, and get everything working, make sure their volumes are working and things like that. A common question I get is, are you recording these? And the answer is yes. For those of you that happen to have missed the past uh, few webinars we've done, we did a, a, an introduction to the IQ panel from a sales and marketing standpoint. We did a full technical webinar last week, and now there's this one. All three uh, have been or are being recorded, as well as next week's webinar, where we'll go into some sales and marketing tips and tricks, will have also be recorded. But all those are available on our YouTube page. If you go to youtube.com slash qualsys, uh, make sure that you register there. I'll put the link in the chat so you can see it and everyone can get registered for that. You'll be able to get those notifications. And as a follow-up to this webinar, 
we'll be sending you an email tomorrow that will include a link to that webinar recording uh, playlist so you can be able to go and watch those as well as all the other great video content we've created we're working very hard to create video content that supports you in the market not only from a sales standpoint but from a support standpoint um, and more uh, there's lots of training videos and all sorts of things on there we want to make sure you've got access to it and be able to use it as you see fit um, another poll that i think is important for us to understand um, what you do is which home automation devices do you currently install are you doing lights are you doing locks are you doing thermostats maybe it's a z-wave thermostat or a, or a wi-fi type thermostat uh, doorbell cameras uh, indoor or outdoor cameras and you can choose all that apply here if you're doing all of them check all the boxes um, you know i think there's a big big market for doorbell cameras here in the u.s i'm imagining the same thing is over there in the united kingdom um, i think you know there's a lot of people doing indoor and outdoor cameras cameras has, been, has become a very hot thing for the past few years and there's great features on the IQ panel that make using cameras um, and experiencing cameras as an end user uh, even better. So we're excited to be able to have those as part of the solution today and to talk a little bit about them. I'm gonna go ahead and close that poll out. And um, the, uh, the next question I've got for you is, which percentage of installations are you actually signing with a maintenance contract? Um, and the answers range from none to all. I'm curious to know which uh, what percentage? And when we say maintenance contract, you know, we mean, you know, something that's almost like a, uh, um, Paul, help me out with the right words here. It's it's like a, a an extended warranty type thing, right? Where you can, where you've got something yeah, that, you know, contract. you to go out and do it. Yeah, it's in, in the UK, we define it as uh, something where a customer will have like a yearly maintenance fee, which may cover them for uh, the batteries to be replaced, uh, for monitoring fees, that sort of thing. It's a it's a great idea, and it's something that not a lot of um, you know security companies in the United States are doing. I think there's some out there that have it, but um, many of them do not do that. And I don't I, I'm not entirely sure what the reason is, but it's a it's a great idea, and I think it's a great source of revenue for you. And I'd I'd be curious to as we get a chance to talk one on one um, or in smaller groups, I'd be curious to hear, or you can put it in the chat. Um, how many people are taking advantage of that? I would imagine that that's a fairly profitable thing, similar to you know, an extended warranty on a vehicle or something like that, that, you know, you get a lot of people signing up for it, or at least a good percentage of people signing up for it. And yet, you know, hardly anyone's taking advantage of it. So um, I would imagine it's a great source of revenue. I'm going to go ahead and close that poll out. And then my final poll question I'd like to understand is what percentage of your systems that you install are hybrid, uh, meaning of both a hardwire and wireless system? And the ra answers range from none 10 percent, 25 50 or 75 or higher i'm um, curious to know you know of those installations are you using hardwire are you using wireless and are you using them together um because i think it's a uh, it's an interesting dynamic um especially as the world becomes more and more wireless to see how much um especially in the commercial space or in the pro channel uh that hard hybrid type solutions are still being asked for and still being needed uh, and I believe that there is still a really good market for that kind of stuff out there. You know, I was talking to someone just today about um, a beach house that they had in California, and they were saying that, you know, they've always done wireless systems on all of their all, all of their homes uh, that they've owned over the years. Yet with this house that they purchased, they went with hardwired systems, not because they didn't like wireless or because it wouldn't work, but because they wanted the sensors to essentially just be disappeared. They didn't want to see them at all. Um, so there's some great advantages to, to both. And so it's interesting to see how how um, how that changes, you know, in various regions. So anyway, I really appreciate the time on all these. Um, you know, Eric says, especially useful during lockdown, revenue keeps rolling in. I mean, yeah, those maintenance comp, um, contracts, I would imagine that's the case. That's great. Great feedback there. Um, I don't I don't want to delay this any further. Again, this is being recorded, so you can always review it again uh, at your leisure. Uh, but I want to turn the time over to Jeremy Blakeney, um, who is going to take us through some of the great tips and tricks with IQ Panel that you can use. Jeremy, turn the time to you. Yeah, hey, thank you, Jeremy. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, good morning to me. <laughs> um, anyways, uh, my name is Jeremy Blakeney. I'm a technical account manager uh, for Qualsys JCI. Um, and, uh, you know, I was on a webinar i think well potentially with uh, a handful of you last week or maybe all of you last week um going through kind of a, a more higher level 
uh, of the IQ panel on the, on the installation side. You know, we talked a little bit uh, or a lot about uh, the functionality and, and, and benefits and features of the IQ panel. And, and then we jumped into a few uh, little uh, things such as, you know, as I mentioned, the higher level uh, technical programming, whether it be the wizard, uh, a few little uh, diagnostic tools, and then and then we kind of you know that was that was our time. So uh, this week, uh, right now, uh, I would like to get into uh, a little a little deeper. Um, you know, there some things, a few things will be a little perhaps repetitive. Maybe uh, left you with a few questions last week if you were on, and and hopefully I can answer those uh, for you today. Um, with just uh, you know my my flow and as I'm going. Uh, also, again, feel free uh, to use the chat below. Uh, ask some questions. I'll I'll stop uh, at a few points. You know, we only have you know an hour twenty, uh, I believe, left in the meeting today. So uh, I won't I won't spend too much time in the middle of the presentation, stopping for a bunch of questions. Um, but uh, I will. Perhaps stop once or twice uh, quickly if, if uh, you know, and I think Jeremy and Tomer and Paul are keeping an eye on those. So if there's anything um, that they feel that uh, you know could benefit uh, talking and and talking about and discussing for the entire group, then you know they'll bring those up. So if not, you know we'll leave uh, kind of the, the the broader majority of the questions up to the end. So. Um, so you should all, Jerry, you can see my screen over here with my two, my presentation and my my panel screen, right? We certainly can. So yeah, you get the presentation on one side, and for those that are familiar with it, there's a, a panel simulator. It's connected to an actual panel on the right. Uh, so whatever you're doing on your actual panel, you'll be able to show uh, people what it's the real experience is like, right? Yep. Yep. Perfect. Okay. Cool. So. Um, Gonna, so, so I'm going to hop in, you know, I apologize, it's not going to be in this big fancy presenter mode because I kind of want to show and bounce back and forth between the two. Um, and, and I'm going to start with uh, the presentation, kind of follow along here and there uh, with the panel and, and then probably go into a few other, you know, deeper things on the panel as well. Um, but being a technical webinar, you know, we're, we're just going to dive right into um, those pieces. So. Right off, right off the get-go, um, you know, talking about hardware, as you have probably seen, and hopefully all of you have had some type of interaction uh, with the IQ panel already. Uh, if you have not, call Paul, uh, message Paul, knock on Paul's door, find Paul, and um, you know he will help him help you out with that. I'm sure. So. Um, just uh, kind of going over, you know, here's a, a very simple front view. What is what? There's, you know, LED status, panel camera, and and I'll kind of talk a little bit about um, some of these here in a little bit. Uh, a little more of a a fluffy. Um, sorry about that. Uh, kind of sales talking about the camera and so forth. But um, <clears throat> as you can see, you know, there is this main interface. Now you see at the bottom here, watch this, I'm gonna zoom in. We have all these little dots. Uh, these dots are indicative of more pages. Uh, so therefore, as you add more devices, uh, you then are presented with additional pages. So so if I, if I go over on my panel here, I'm gonna hop out of this uh, wizard real quick. Um, and you'll see uh, that I have a few there's a lot going on. You can see I have all these dots at the bottom. And, and as I move across, I swipe across my panel, you know, I have all kinds of errors, whichever disregard. But you'll see that my page is changing. Now, we, we do support, you know, a handful of different uh, Z-Wave type of devices. As you saw, there are lighting or energy metering devices. That's what the little lightning bolt is. Uh, and then we have some temperature control, right? The thermostat is currently off. Sorry for the Fahrenheit. Uh, and, and then there, here's the panel camera, for example, uh, and which will take photos on disarm and four minutes of video. Uh, and you can also peek in from alarm.com. And then we have this kind of general uh, status or manage my system or manage my homepage, 
which kind of calls out to the end user. Uh, it, it, it gives them another reason to interact with the panel. Uh, it's purposeful. When you see red, red typically not, you know, being good, really, then it, it you know, drives the end user to want to touch it and, and see what's going on or update or whatever it may be. So therefore, you know, really it's, it's creating a lower uh, attrition, higher attach rate for you, fewer, fewer cancellations, right? Uh, because, you know, your customer isn't calling someone else or, or telling you they want to cancel because they don't use it. Well, they're, you know, they're constantly interacting and that's kind of the goal. Uh, so you'll see we're missing, for example, yes, we do support door locks, uh, but there is not a page on here with a door lock. Um, meaning that, as I mentioned, dynamically, as you add or remove certain Z-Wave devices, um, that, that page will appear or disappear dynamically. Um, so that way, you know, one, one homeowner, one customer may have a different configuration than another. So their panel may have a few or, or fewer uh, screens to interact with. Now, now on, um, I'll get into, well, okay. So since I'm, since I'm talking about automation again, uh, I'm, I'm going to kind of free ball, uh, you know, a little, little less, uh, uh formal here, but. For, for those situations where, uh, let's say, for example, your panel is um, installed in, I don't know, a doctor's office, uh, an office period, uh, some place where maybe you do not want uh, everyone to be able to see or have access to, what if I had my office Z-Wave door lock uh, paired to the panel? Well, now I'm gonna have this screen on here that says unlock the door. Now. Obviously, as you know, the, the the owner to that office or that space, I'm not giving my code out to my door, but the panel's sitting in the lobby. So who's to say that they can't swipe over and just unlock my door, right? So there are uh, options. Uh, so if we go into uh, the panel programming, which we'll swipe down from the top, uh, we'll hit settings, uh, and then you'll see we're gonna do this uh, advanced uh, settings right here. I'll use my mouse a little easier to follow. So advanced settings. There are there are two different codes. Um, there is an installer code and there is a dealer code. Okay, and and uh, I'm going to show you. I'm going to flip this screen over here. You can kind of see at the bottom of my presentation uh, it says installer menu, dealer menu, and uh, here we go. You can see a few little icons are different, um, to, you know, just to flat out, you know, be honest, the, the, the reason why we have two, um, I guess, installer types, if you want to call it, is, you know, originally building our first generation panel, uh, Interlogix in the United States, uh, North America was a very big brand. Um, we kind of followed uh, their example with having this type of installer and dealer code now over time we've realized there's nothing really there i guess there's not really much of a point to have a dealer code so eventually um that may end up going away in another generation of our panel uh, for the time being we have both but but just so you know there there really isn't that much of a difference between the two um You'll see uh, things like being able to manually set the date and time. That's in that's if, of course, alarm.com is not working correctly, which they shouldn't have an issue. Um, and also being able to, uh, well, let me show you here. Uh, the One of the kind of two of the other bigger ones, so let's go 2222, two, 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 is dealer branding. This is a, this is a very cool feature um, for you all. And and maybe if you want, Jer, I'll, I'm going to pass this to you, and you can kind of blurb here uh, because this is your kind of child. Yes, I'd be happy to. Um, you know, one of the things that we got a lot of feedback from um, our customers was they want the panel to feel like them. They want it to feel like you know it's not the Qualsys IQ panel or the JCI IQ panel or the DSC or Visonic IQ panel. They want it to feel like it's their IQ panel, you know, your company represented as much as possible. And so one of the things we want to do is we wanted to create a way for you to customize that uh, in a variety of ways. Uh, the first one is the contact information you've got there on the screen can be really customized to be 
whatever you want. You know, your dealer name. We've got space for two different taglines. We've got a space for your your contact phone number. You know, if you want to be able to, you know, have a specific phone number that the, these IQ panels call into. Maybe you've got one person on your team who's really good at it. You could put that phone number in there. You've got, and it will appear on the panel just like you can see on the screen here. You know, whatever you put in that in that slot will appear right there. Email address, maybe that's your support at you know your company .com, um, You know, website uh, and you know the installation location zip code. So this allows you to customize this information, and you can customize this from Alarm.com. So from a remote location, you have the ability to go in and edit that information in real time. So you can push it as part of a template or you can manually edit it by panel, or you can um, you know, remotely change it at any point. So it's a really nice feature to add that custom way. And, and it allows your customers to really get to you and when they want to, because they can touch that, that thing. And you'll notice that in the upper right-hand corner, it's an envelope icon. Well, if you're an alarm.com silver package or above, that envelope icon is replaced with your logo. If you're not an alarm.com silver package or above, you can click the load custom logo function and by clicking on there you can insert an sd card a micro sd card into the side of the panel load your own logo and there's instructions on the bottom of the page there uh, and once you've loaded your own logo then your logo appears at the very top of the page so that when they're seeing that little message bubble you see the little four message it represents that there's four alerts and alarms the messages are from you they're not from a, just a mail system, they're from you. And so it looks like your logo, it looks like your thing. And you can play around with that. It, there's a, I think it's a, a 50 by 100 or it's 100 by 200 you know, pixel logo that you can upload into there. The next one you see is the on-screen billboard. And that was really designed to be, the question I would ask your marketing teams or your sales teams is, if you had a seven inch billboard in the customer's home, what would you tell them? And it's fantastic to hear the, the exciting different ideas. Oh, I would tell them about our customer service. I would tell them about our referral program. Maybe I would tell them about a feature that they're not taking advantage of or a device that they should add to their system. You know, cameras 50% off or, hey, I want to, you know, tell you about Bluetooth disarming and how cool it is. You know, call us to log into, um, you know, that on your phone and, and, and get it working for you today. You know, maybe you want to tell them about your customer service support. You know, we're here for you anytime you need us, things like that. These on-screen billboard images will actually show up in the photo frame um, in, uh, in sequence with the other ones that they're doing. So if you have, you know, if the customer loads in, call it 15 to 20 of their own family photos, mm -hmm. you have five photos that are part of the on-screen billboard that allows you to have them play in between the other photos that they're doing and they can't delete them they can't change them and you could choose to toggle this on or off if you get a customer who says hey i don't want your advertisements on my panel anymore you can remotely log into alarm.com and turn those off and they don't show up anymore um, this is especially great for those of you working with builders imagine your on-screen billboard is saying things like activate this system today for a free device or to get you know x percent off or to get your first month free or things like that and those messages play whenever the panel's not being used, which gives you an extra advertisement when you're not in the home and the home's being shown or things like that. And whether it's a builder type scenario or just partnering with a real estate agent, um, you know, it's a great way to show off your company uh, and get some attraction to, this, to the system there. The fourth icon there is the loading help videos. So one of the great things about the system, and this is one of our tips for today, is when you train a customer on how to use the system, if you click on the little envelope icon, you'll see the second section called video tutorials. And that video tutorials plays a series of videos for you. You can choose from arming, disarming, how to create a user code, how to link Bluetooth, how to connect Wi-Fi. All, most of the common reasons why a customer calls into the, the, uh, the customer service line would be captured here. Uh, so the goal here is when your technicians are in the home doing the install, that they would show them, hey, if you have a question about something, Go to your video tutorials and watch the video right here on your screen. And Jared, go ahead and press play on one of those. Let's see if it plays well here on this. But you can actually see this will show them an overview of the panel. It will show them how to arm, how to disarm, how to navigate through the systems, things like that. These videos can be customized. So if you wanted your logo at the end or you wanted a message in the beginning or things like that, we have these videos available for download that you can download these, add whatever content you want to them, 
and then load them through this tool in the dealer branding settings. And now you've got your own branded videos that will allow you to look like you. In, in addition, you could load your own unique videos. You don't have to use just our videos. Maybe you've got a company video about welcome to your company or you know, a new program you've created or it's your referral program or things like that. You could take those videos and load them onto the panel and they will be, they will be able to be played as part of the video tutorial library. So it's a really great way of customizing the panel to make this really your panel and your experience for your customers. Awesome, 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 awesome. Thanks, Jared. Appreciate it. So, so this is so this is one of the the kind of bigger ticket items that comes under the dealer menu. Okay, so if you're wanting to brand and customize a little more, kind of manually here on the panel yourself. Uh, you'll need that dealer. You'll have to log in with the dealer code. Now, both codes you can change. Of course, they don't have to be one 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 and two 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 two, and you can change both of those. The, the Eric's other got is, a question here. He says the dealer code is that allowing you to set up branding or other features or settings that you don't want installers to have access to, and that's exactly right. You know, it's a you would have an installer code for your installers, but if there's things you don't necessarily want the installers to have access to, you could have a separate dealer code, and then that protects yes, them. That but, yeah, you, do, you don't get to choose uh, what you want to show to the installer and what you don't want to show to the installer. Uh, it's not so much, uh, I mean, it is permission-based, but uh, you know what I was trying to get at before, there there aren't a lot of differences. Remember, the, the, the panel itself, um, unlike panels in the past and so forth, the, the the panel doesn't have an account number the panel doesn't have a receiver number cid any sort of communication setting so i mean out of the box there's there there's no, i guess i would say it this way there's nothing other than deleting a device of course um but there's there's nothing in the panel that really that an installer uh, could change that's going to prohibit the panel from not communicating with alarm.com right that 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 would be you as the admin uh, or, or whoever in your company going on to the alarm.com website and excuse me the partner portal and and terminating or changing something on that end right so the the the, the only other so if I go to installation and and you'll see this actually change it says dealer settings uh, if I entered with the installer code, it will say installer settings. The major difference here is jam detection. If I type in jam, you'll see PowerGRF jam detection, jam detection, and local alarm. Anyways, so these jam detection settings are only available through the dealer, okay, not the installer. Um, and then the other is master reset. So this one here at the bottom, being able to wipe the panel of all the devices, the configuration settings, the user codes, et cetera, uh, must be accessed through the dealer code. Now, this is not killing the account, right? From alarm.com, remember that the, the, the account, just like if you've ever used the SEM module or um, a Visonic product with an alarm.com uh, radio, it is the same, right? So meaning, uh, it is the IMEI and the radio, so to speak, that is within the panel that is the account. So unless you are terminating the account from alarm.com, uh, the, the panel, there, there's nothing you can do. You can't erase or say, don't talk to alarm.com. So so what, what you know, <laughs> we got down this rabbit hole um, because I wanted to mention, we were talking about the different pages uh, on the panel and in those those kind of interesting use cases where you might not want to show uh, the lock, for example, on the screen, or even or even the thermostat, right? Uh, another big one for small commercial uh, or even commercial, maybe residential applications, where you don't want people to be able to, say you've locked out your thermostat, say you own an Airbnb or VRBO, whatever you call it, um, and, and you want the thermostat locked out, so that's fine, you can do that on the thermostat itself, but then, you just have this big giant page here on the panel where it allows them to control the thermostat. And so you've kind of just defeated that purpose. So, so if you go into installation and uh, this is available through the installer or the dealer settings, I'm just in dealer settings right now, right? 
Uh, and, and if I were to scroll down, I'm going to show you here. Um, scroll, 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 scroll. Uh, page configuration. Okay, you'll see here. You'll see I have a wellness page. I have a home control page. There's a door lock page. I don't have a door lock right now, uh, um, you know, paired. But I do have a thermostat page, right? So if I don't want them to see that on the screen, so I've disabled that page. So going back to the whole dynamic ability of the screen, uh, I now do not see, right? It's completely gone, disappeared. Uh, the thermostat still works. You can still control it from alarm.com. Um, and, and, and all of that sort of thing. It will work on its schedules and, and so forth. But now you've just eliminated, you know, the possibility of, of someone, you know, messing around with the panel screen and unlocking a door that they, you know, otherwise don't have, should not have access to or thermostat, you know, temperature control and so forth. So, um, so Jerry, we got a good question from the field here. Nathan's curious to know, so do you need to be an alarm.com silver partner to do the remote branding and, you know, access all these features and things like that, you know, or can you do everything from an SD card? Can you do everything locally? And the answer is you can do everything locally. Um, however, in the case of wanting your logo on the message center, that requires an alarm.com silver package or above they'll do the logo but all the rest of it putting your contact information oh. being able to toggle pages on and off accessing all this stuff that's available to everyone you know almost everything you're seeing here you can do both locally on the panel and in the cloud uh, and it doesn't require any kind of special alarm.com package yeah uh, customer and, and level to that, literally do it all. yeah to that to that point jer with the with the the envelope of branding as jeremy mentioned if you want it put the, the benefit with being the silver you know whatever talk, talk you know you, you you'll be able to see on the alarm.com website uh if you go under business and then it's called uh things called like business intelligence or something and then you navigate to panel branding manage my brand that sort of thing um you you may have that if you don't um the benefit to having it to having that service, that level of service with alarm.com. And, and I don't know if that's, you know, something they're charging for or, or it's just based on volume or, or I have no idea, right? But um, is that you load the logo once into alarm.com and then every single panel that comes online, it automatically pushes to that panel uh, versus you still can, you can still brand all this you can still, uh, and even at the end of the wizard, uh, you know, it'll ask you if you want to update your contact info, uh, and and this envelope uh, with an image and that envelope with uh, an image being your logo. You can still do all that locally through an SD card or just manually typing in that information. As far as the functionality goes, um, you can do everything local as well, right? I mean, you can arm and disarm your panel, and the, and the siren will scream, and you can control your light lock thermostat and those devices on the panel itself. But of course, as you know, without an alarm.com account, it only goes so far, right? Uh, you don't get the monitoring, the application, and the the entire rules engine uh, that comes with that, that makes it very powerful. Um, so, so jumping back, I'm gonna hop over to this side, uh, you know, of the screen again. Um, I, won't, I won't really go to, uh, this too much, uh, you know, the, the the panel can either be, you know, you can set it on the table, it has a nice little stand that comes in the box, it locks, slides up and locks into these keyholes, the same place you would uh, use for, you know, wall mounting if you were to throw some screws in there. The, the micro SD card slot, you can see here, it's on the side, that's where you would load your tutorials or, or uh, branding, uh, your images and so forth, okay. Uh, and then there's this back plate, uh, where this is kind of like a little thumb hole and, and you'll pop that off with your thumb or finger if that's going to be mounted to the wall as well. Otherwise, you'd, you know, you'd keep it on because uh, you don't want to kind of show the guts, so to speak, uh, if it's sitting on the table. And, and you can see kind of the, the inside. I, again, I won't go too crazy here. Nothing super to talk about. You can see there are a handful of different antennas, uh, both for Sailor, Power G, um, and then there are uh, terminals. Our, our terminals are toolless, uh, therefore you do not need a tool or a screwdriver to, if you're using the actual wired 
ends versus the kind of plug-in barrel jack type, uh, which is there as well, right above it. Then you simply push down on the tab and slide the wire in and it, and it grabs with some teeth, right? It makes that connection. Um, and then of course, there's this little battery, right? It's actually not very big. Um, it's, you know, let's say, oh heavens, three and a half to four centimeters square probably. Uh, and it's it might be, I don't know, a centimeter uh, thick. Uh, and, and that complies with uh, EN as well as, you know, North America's UL, uh, but, but over 24 hours uh, of, uh, well, I would say this, we, we meet with ease the 24 hour uh, requirement for any of those standards or certifications. And in, in, in most cases, uh, we, as I mentioned, even exceed that. So you, you have a 24 hour backup battery on that panel. Now we do some smart things there. Um, so, so if I flip over and go back to my panel, right? If I hit settings, advanced settings, I'm gonna do one, 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 one. Okay, installation, installer settings. You see kind of right here at the top, it says power management. Um, this, this, uh, this whole power management is, is part of the reason we can get and exceed that 24 hours. And, and what happens is out of the box by default, power management is enabled. And when the power goes out in the home, um, you know, of course the, the panel's running on battery, right? Uh, every, everything else in the house isn't working, right? So if, if your Wi-Fi is down, because of course it's plugged into the wall, your Z-Wave, lamp modules, thermostat, you know, well, the, if your thermostat has batteries, I guess, but um, a lot of those things are disabled, right? Because you have no power. So, so why continue to run the Wi-Fi radio in the panel, the Z-Wave radio in the panel, you know, and, and, and keep the screen on for 10 minutes before it goes to sleep or, you know, all of these things, it's just going to drain the battery faster. So, um, so we shut that down, right? So by default, power management is turned on. Uh, and if they lose power, uh, the Wi-Fi radio will turn off. Now, of course, you, you're still operating on cellular, right? You can't turn off the cell radio. Uh, it, it works all the time. And uh, of course, that runs on battery. So we shut off the cell radio, we shut off Z-Wave. Um, uh, you know, we change the screen timeout to be much quicker and to go black uh, rather than to flip through all of these images and again, right, chew up power. So now, now a kind of side trick is, um, you know, I, I would say a, a, a very good use in like installer use case for this, especially for Z-Wave devices. Z-Wave, as you know, is a mesh style network, right? So when you pair a Z-Wave device, it's not, it's not automatically creating this mesh. It's individually, each device is trying to pair and talk to the panel directly, no matter how far away it is, until you, which we'll talk about later, which is uh, you rediscover the network, okay? Now, in some cases, you may have uh, a module that's further away and it's just Goodness, it's not, it's too far away to pair to your panel, but that's not to say that, you know, it's too far away to work once you get all of the devices paired and you've created this network, right? This mesh. So, I mean, you can unplug it if you're able to. Obviously, you might not be able to do that with a thermostat so easily um, and bring it closer to the panel. But also, just as, you know, simplicity, the, the panel out of the box comes with like 30 to 40% battery charged. So you can uh, power up the panel on battery only. It does not have to be plugged in. If you hold the side button for three to four seconds, the panel will boot up, okay? Now, as I mentioned, it's running on battery. So, excuse me, there are things that the panel is not going to allow you to do. For example, update the panel um, when, when your battery gets to a certain percentage and you know a few other things, pairing Z-Wave devices, for example, right? Because your uh, Z-Wave radio is off. So just as a little trick, what, what, what you could do is you could disable, right? Power management, right? It's enabled, um, disabled. Um, I could disable this for the time being. And because I can't take 
some of the things, for example, a door lock um, or maybe a thermostat and so forth might be able might not be able to take it off, but it's too far away to pair to the panel. I could I could move around with my panel and pair those devices. And then when I put my panel back in its resting place, snapped in on the wall or on the table, you know, make sure I flip back on my power management, of course. And 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 then I can run my network rediscovery, right? Um, <clears throat> meaning that my panel is in its final resting place, all these devices are out there, and that's when the panel and that Z-Wave mesh network start communicating and bouncing back and forth uh, across the home between all of those devices you just installed, and will create that that mesh that will stand there kind of you know forever basically. Um, and 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 that way you won't have those. Uh, you, you're not worried about the range issues. You're not doing anything. You're not hurting anything by walking around with your panel and pairing those devices. It's not like oh well, you know I got really close so a pair, but then it's further away and it's not going to work. Well, yeah, that's true. It's not going to work because it's talk, trying to talk directly to the panel. But if you rediscover the network and use your diagnostic tools, which I'll show you, um, you can make sure that the mesh has, you know, uh, 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 networked that it that it has um, communicated back and forth and and created this spider web of devices, so to speak. Um, and this is this goes into the question that was asked on last week's webinar. Could we mount the panel on the wall somewhere and then be able to unhook it and walk it around the house or take it places? And you know, part of the reason we said that it, that's not recommended is because you know we worry that you know you're going to lose your panel and it's going to be tucked under your pillows or you know mm -hmm. stuffed in the couch cushions when you're you know you uh -huh. get home and you're trying to disarm it. You can't find the darn thing. Uh, but also you yeah. know this the primary reason is is for exactly this to make sure that that mesh network once it optimizes does stay as optimized as possible. Now, now Z-Wave Mesh, especially Z-Wave Plus, is self-healing. So if something moves, it will eventually retrack itself and fix itself, right, Jerry? Yeah, yeah, so especially more so in uh, EMEA UK and Europe, um, with we're, we're using a 700 series card, so even, even better uh, with that sort of technology. Having said that, you know, uh, th think about the, the situation as well with, Doing a, uh, I'll mention two things. Doing a tabletop style. If if you have a homeowner that's, well, I want to bring it to my bedroom at nighttime, and then you know it's on the third floor because I live in a a tall skinny house. Uh, but then you know during the day I'm going to bring it back downstairs. You know the the network isn't going to heal and bounce around that fast. You're, you're likely going to have some kind of uh, latency or issues. So if you know people are putting it on a table, just you know, be sure and be aware as an installer that you're letting them know, you know, if they move it around, it, it could cause some uh, issues with the network and be sure to rediscover the network. And they have the tools to do that as an, as a, uh, as a master user code, they can rediscover the network themselves. Uh, so that's not an issue. And, and they'll want to do that every time. The, the other is, as, as Jeremy mentioned, it it is not a, a a tablet. I mean, it has a seven inch screen, sure, but it's not like a see no green, uh, uh, you know, enclosed tablet. If someone's taking it off their wall, uh, they have all the green motherboard and everything. I mean, you've literally just filleted the panel open, and they're walking around with the big giant circuit board in their hands with a battery and a siren and you know all that jazz. And, and, and again. You're 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 changing the dynamics of the atmosphere, uh, with or the environment with moving everything around. Um, you know they're losing it. The battery dies. I mean, there's a whole bunch of things, right? It, it, it's no different than than your PM 360R or your DSC or power. You know whatever you're using. Um, you know it is made to be in one place right uh, it is it is meant to be stationary it is not a control force system that is based on the premise of automation only and costs tens of thousands of pounds right uh or euros or dollars i mean super expensive and yeah they're they're made to have tablets to walk around with that's the whole point i mean if we could do that if you want a you know ten thousand dollar system, we'll say a ten thousand dollar system if you want. But you know it is uh, it is meant to stay on the wall, right, or or stationary.
Um, so, so, so moving on here, um, I want to throw you kind of the inside. You know, we talked a little bit about this last week. Um, th there are these uh, pushpin terminals. There's the barrel jack. Um, we supply a seven volt power supply. Uh, it is uh, not traditional to what you're using today. You might get used to it, but you know, we're, we're as I mentioned uh, uh, last week, and as Paul and and his team knows, and and mine that. We are uh, sourcing an inline power supply um, if that is desired, right? Uh, similar to, I, I don't know if that's what ships in the PM360R in the UK. I know it does in Spain for the most part. Um, but uh, so, th so there could be different options for you. Uh, and, and it is low, right? Seven volt DC, that's, that's very, very low. Uh, so in that aspect, you know, like a tablet, it is more similar to a tablet with power. Uh, and so therefore, if you are hardwiring a siren to uh, the panel itself, you do need an additional 12 volt power supply DC. Uh, the maximum current draw of the siren, it's more like a piezo siren, if, if that exists, right? Low draw, 300 milliamps um, sounding device. Now, this is probably going to come up not either in the chat box or bouncing around, you know, in your space, which is, is that can we program this to be that can we use a relay is this programmable what about what about etc cetera, etc cetera. this output is a very static hard-coded very simple output uh meaning that it is essentially a light switch it pulls voltage to ground if you will so or like an open collector uh the the, the rule is hard-coded meaning when the panel goes into an alarm state, okay, uh, these terminals essentially close or draws you know, the, the, the ground to voltage or vice versa, and it now completes this circuit, right? Allowing that 12 volts power to run through and sound the siren. When the alarm is disabled or turned off, right, reset, uh, that, that loop essentially just opens again. There is no way to program that. There's no way to change it. That is just, that's the way it is. If, you, if you're looking for something, you know, a little more robust, yes, technically you can, you know, if you want a strobe or you want some other thing, I mean, you can get tricky and wire in a relay so long as it meets the requirements, but, but still the programming aspect is only going to trigger on an alarm event. Um, the, the other option is there is a device uh, coming that we have built, which is a wired to wireless uh, translator, we call it, which is the ability to take an old hardwired system and convert all of the uh, leads, all of the contacts, the motion detectors and so forth into a wireless signal, a wireless power G signal back to the IQ panel. And there is some uh, PGM support, uh, not, you know, not a ton right now. It is pretty new. It's, uh, you know, just barely a few months old. So as we continue to, you know, make that device more robust through firmware updates to the device, as well as software to the panel itself, uh, we are going down the path to having more open flexibility to programming and using those, uh, programmable, um, you know, devices output inputs uh, on that wired to wireless device to give you a lot more flexibility. So stay tuned for that. If you, if you want information on that, you know, contact Paul or Machi. Um, I'm, not, I'm not sure if you know who he is, but Paul does. So, uh, or myself, whichever. Um, <clears throat> and, and we can get you in touch with the uh, correct people if you're interested in that uh, wired to wireless device. So, um, you know, moving moving down, uh, one of the, uh, I don't know who was on last week, but I'm going to show you half of this clip here. Uh, this is Kevin. Uh, you know, I've known him for, goodness, 15 years. He is our kind of head man, director, technical account management uh, globally. And, um, you, you know, the, 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 the toughest part, we, we've done so much with software to make it so simple. And, uh, you know, we pride ourselves more on being a, I guess, software company than a 
hardware manufacturer. Uh, so this is going to be a little bit different for you, you know, flat, just, you know, upfront, honest. Uh, the panel does, uh, it, it opens pretty easily, it closes not as easily. Um, you, you will the first, second time uh, without, you know, uh, any instruction or, or looking at the little diagrams that come in the box or watching a little video or, or talking on the phone to one of us, uh, you know, you, you will have a little bit of a hard time. Once you kind of have your aha moment, your light bulb, right? Um, Watching and this, this is designed or, by a Silicon Valley engineer who, you know, was designing consumer electronics. And so one of the things he used was something called a snap clip along the top of it. And it's yeah. designed to close and it's, not it's ever be closed. closed and it stays closed, essentially, right? Yeah, it's like, exactly. it's, 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 it's kind of like, you learn the trick. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so it's, it's kind of like a, going to, she go to a store. Uh, goodness, talk about opening your iPhone and changing the screen, really, or or your tablet. I mean, you can do it. It's not it's not yeah, the easiest. Yeah, it's, it's, you can do uh, it. You always feel like you're about to break it when you do it. But yeah. So so anyway, so I'm I'm gonna gonna I'm gonna flip this and see if you can watch this here. I'm gonna show kind of half a clip, uh, but you'll kind of see what we're talking All right, about, guys. We thought we'd shoot this quick little uh, video here today to show you how to close the panel. We're representing our friends up north uh, in Canada with our Qualsys t-shirt today, but I want to show you two different ways to close the panel to make it easier for you. So I'm going to start by opening it up here. I press the bottom panel tamper. button. Panel tamper. All right, and we'll do this side. So there are two spring-loaded tabs Now there's two uh, ways. The this bottom. is an older back plate. As you can see, my antenna is routed inside the wall through the lower right-hand screw hole. If you had a back plate, you'd have a dedicated hole for your antenna here. Very important. So we'll just touch on that while we're while we're talking about this. Now, two ways to close this: uh, bottom to top or top to bottom. So I'll show you bottom to top first. I like to go bottom to top because it allows me to get my antenna all the way down inside the wall there. And so what I do is I don't worry about the top, and I just simply latch the bottom, leave the top out completely, and then these are what we call snap tabs. And you're going to take your thumb on the edge of the screen and you're going to push downward at a 45 degree angle until you hear it snap and there should be four of them two three four there you go we missed that one so one two three four super tight nice and easy it's downward pressure on the face of the glass there kind of at a 45 degree angle awesome so that is the 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 most the the easiest the most trained on you know that's what we suggest um you know kind of sandwich or or seat the bottom in first uh, there are spring-loaded tabs that the panel will very easily uh snap into right and then the top you, you you'll notice these tabs uh and essentially what's happening as kevin mentioned you know you're pushing down on the on the edge of, of the screen and the back is essentially rolling over and snapping into those tabs, right? So um, it is actually pretty simple. Um, once you, again, you have your aha moment and it's more difficult sitting at a desk and having it on your lap uh, because you're kind of trying to balance the thing at the same time that you're trying to snap it together. So with it being on a wall, you know, having both hands free, it is much, much easier. Um, so just kind of keep that in mind. As you start playing and getting the panels uh, and installing them, you know the first couple of times you might want to throw it up against the wall. Um, but but I promise you, you know, watching that video, um, talking to us, uh, whatever when you have that. Oh, that's how. Okay, it, it, it'll be like any other panel. I mean, it's literally I can open and close it in you know ten seconds. Now, something I want to call out in this video, Kevin mentioned a few times this antenna to be. Uh, stuffed down inside the wall. Um, this is again, we we use the same panel uh, globally. Uh, the differences are the supported RF devices and cards that are installed in the panel. North America is a little weird. Um, there are, I guess, they are less less strict, and 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 I mean, maybe that's not the 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 best route uh, with uh, RF frequency and you know polluting the air with radio waves, I guess. 
But for example, in, in North America, Honeywell, DSC, Interlogix, Qualsys, you know, et cetera, et cetera, they all work on separate and, and different frequencies, uh, 345, 433, 319, and then of course, PowerG works on 915 in uh, North America, right? So to support those legacy devices, those kind of older one-way non-PowerG devices from the different brands, they there there are different cards and they have a, a a pigtail antenna that come out the back. So for uh, for the UK, uh, since you are you know bisonic devices and and so forth, uh, the Power G antenna is actually built inside the panel, and so you will never see this little white dangly uh, antenna uh, popping out the back. So um, okay, so 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 I want to jump in. Uh, I'm going to hop over to the panel here. Um, and and right off the bat, I'm going to talk about some things that are going on, and we're going to talk about some of these troubleshooting and and uh, tools and so forth that we have in the panel. Okay, now <clears throat> just as 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 you likely and hopefully all know, you know Power G, regardless of the brand, right, whether it be Bisonic or DSC or whatever. Um, it is a, is a two-way communicating device, right? Which means it, uh, you know, has to talk to the panel and the panel has to talk back uh, to it. It's like a, like a child, really. Um, and uh, <clears throat> they have to make that connection, that association. So when you are enrolling your device, um, <clears throat> it, 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 just because you're entering the information on the screen does not mean that the, the radio the transceiver in the panel and the device itself have made that that association that connection yet so there so there will be a little you know let's say you you pair it blah 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 sensor's been added successfully and then you go and open the door you start opening and closing this thing you're like well, why isn't it working there, there there is a little bit of time and and depending on the device uh, some take a little more time than others for example the keypads uh, may take a little longer uh, but a little more time to associate or what we call network okay so so what you'll see that's exactly what's happening right here on this screen excuse me you see the the front door and the motion detector they're sitting in, uh circling over and over and over again this this panel i pulled from my office so the devices that it was paired to uh, are back at the office but but a good representation of well what's going on right so uh, what's going on is it's essentially waiting and the panel is trying to associate or connect with these devices and it's not happening, right? So when you reboot your panel uh, or your devices have not been quote unquote networked yet, they're going to sit here in this state. And as they, on a typical reboot, and the panel of course is in that, that home, it hasn't moved, uh, these will eventually drop off that active list and they will work you know, as as they would normally, and and I'm going to show you where where you can kind of see this uh, real time, really, and 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 uh, how to troubleshoot that. So, uh, if we go back into, we're pulling down the menu, right? I, I'm going to hit my settings, uh, and then advanced settings, okay? And one 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 one, okay. I'm using the installer code, right? And then system test, and under system test, there is a whole host of different items to uh, to run through. And, and I'll talk about some of these. But right now we're talking Power G, okay? So um, there is, a, just not to be confused, there is a sensor test page and there is a Power G test page. Uh, the sensor test page is again for those legacy kind of old uh, one-way devices. Uh, so don't worry about that. You'll use, of course, if you're using a Power G device, you use Power G. And you'll see here it says synchronizing. Um, and it's just sitting in this state over and over and over again, right? And then you'll see my front window, which uh, at, uh, let me go back home, it has this exclamation mark, like what's wrong? Something is wrong, a malfunction uh, is essentially happening, right? Alert. And, and so coming back here, it is telling me exactly um, in, the Power G, in the Power G test page uh, that this device did not end up networking right it's not it's not networked it didn't it didn't actually associate uh perhaps it, it kept synchronizing and it tried to find this device and then eventually it went into okay well it's just 
you know, not networked. Now, to reinitiate that sequence, it, again, if you are in the home and you're having this issue, tampering a PowerG device and restoring the tamper will reinitiate that uh, association uh, command to the panel. So they will retry again to associate, okay? And then uh, for certain devices, right, this is a PowerG test. So uh, traditionally, when this is networked, it will give me also, of course, my signal strength. And, uh, and then it will give me a run, right, that I can run and, and receive the signal strength back. Now, you'll notice these two say unsupported. This is, and, and, and I don't know if this is different again. Sorry, my screen keeps going to sleep here. Um, this is based on, uh, uh, you'll notice the sticker type or the prefix is the same, 109109, 109, right? Now, those are the, if you're familiar with the more slim um, door window contacts that have that little battery pull tab now that, that come out of them, I think for the most part, or if they don't, they're at least the ones with the smaller kind of, uh, CR123, uh, sorry, not CR, uh, 2032 batteries, I believe they are, right? The small kind of watch uh, that are the size of a coin uh, battery. Those devices specifically have limitations with sending uh, signal strength. When you enroll the device for the first time, there is a 15 minute kind of walk test mode, right? Or if you tamper the device and restore the tamper, there's a 15 minute walk test mode where it flashes the LEDs, right? For your signal strength. That 15 minutes, you can run uh, the, the signal strength test on the panel and the panel will show under the PowerG test page, uh, the signal strength uh, of that device. Afterwards, um, unlike, for example, the devices that have the terminals that use the larger lithium batteries, like the CR123 batteries, uh, and so forth. Those those devices having a larger battery, you know, uh, because of of the the consumption that it takes to always send and update signal strength and so forth, that would drain the battery a lot sooner on those smaller devices that have the you know watch style or sorry the coin style battery. Okay. So that's why you will not see it on there. Now, you can always get the LED test, right? So you can always uh, tamper, restore the device, pull the magnet across from the device, and you'll see the uh, the LEDs blink, you know, red, yellow, or green uh, for your signal strength, no problem. But but from the panel, that kind of uh, uh, thing is not supported from the from the actual device. Okay. Um, so I, I'm going to keep, uh, I want to show you, uh, so since we're talking about devices, I want to show you a little uh, tip that is common for the UK um, about pairing devices. I'm just going to show you real fast about pairing uh, a, a PowerG device. Um, and, and then I'm going to walk back through, I want, I want to talk about uh, some of the, the other tests. Uh, and things, and I know we have 25 minutes left, so I'll make it lickety split here. But I, I wanted to mention something that's that's come up that again is a little different uh, with our panel, right? We we are kind of Power G is or was a, I don't I'm not saying it in a bad way, but an afterthought for us, right? We we had had the IQ panel in circulation for a few years. Uh, before we uh, integrated with, uh, you know, PowerG and having that technology. So as we have been going along, we are um, increasingly adding more uh, configuration, more flexibility, uh, supporting more devices and more functions with the PowerG line of devices. So you will see there, there will be some differences, but but one thing that's, again, different and, and a little tricky is, you know, on the on the Visonic uh, devices and in their the perspective manuals, it's, you know, it's it's built for a Visonic panel. So you're going to get instructions to pair with a Visonic panel, right? There isn't a 
kind of breakout line item that says, oh, but if you're using a Colossus panel, do it this way. For the most part, it's very, very similar. The biggest difference is, as I mentioned, you may you may or may not have different or more or less features between one panel and the other with those devices. So one of them that I wanted to call out that's that's been coming up recently, actually, uh, and that is different is a, is a shock sensor. Okay. Uh, so first off, uh, you have these two uh, abilities to add a device. There is auto learn, and then there is add sensor. So auto learn is more similar to what you're doing today uh, on your on your products, right? You put the panel into a kind of listening state, and then you would activate the device by you know holding down the uh, the learn button within the device itself. The light goes yellow or amber, and then it will pop up. Uh, for us, it will pop up on the screen with the device ID, like this one says 109, right, 7618, um, with the device ID saying, hey, device ID 1097618 is requesting to be added. So I can say yes. And the, and the, and the cool thing about that is if you're in a home, there's lots of things going on and people are maybe have a helper, one guy's pressing a button and then you're trying to pair another button. Um, or there's just some weird coincidence uh, of devices that uh, that uh, come in, then then you know that pop-up shows you, and you can verify on the back of the device itself, right? Saying, okay, yes, this is the ID, this is the device that I'm trying to currently enroll, versus oh wait, that is not the device. Oh, you press a button at the same time as I did. That's why I cancel, right? So um so there's the auto learn and then there's the add sensor and when i hit add sensor it's it's a manual process right so i can add the id so one that i wanted to mention is this guy shock sensor right um so so for example what happens here is you'll see i have a few different under my system so my id okay whatever type that in uh and then i have this sensor type uh, so a shock sensor has multiple functions, right? Um, meaning there is the shock, there is the read, and then there is the turn, then there are the terminals. We support uh, two. I guess we support an open close uh, function and the potentiometer, which essentially is you know the vibration and and so forth of uh, of the shock, right? Um, so meaning you can auto learn the, the, the shock or the door contact, whatever, right? Hit auto learn. I press and hold the button. Okay. It pairs in and, you know, I get my sensor ID pops up with, you know, whatever it is, who knows, uh, and, and okay. Shock sensor pulled up. So I can change my sensitivity level to low, medium, high, you know, there's, there, there may be some uh, settings on the device itself and it is, I want it to report as shock you know it is a shock sensor and uh, uh group 13 you can tell the difference here right so shock when i uh change it to shock away only then uh that shock uh detector will not be active in the armed stay uh state and, and then of course i have you know i can change the name and change the time and so forth but but what i wanted to mention here is okay well how do i enroll both so one of them you would auto learn and you'd configure, okay, this is the shock sensor, you know, add new. And then I would come in here and do the manual add that I'm showing you right now. And I would choose the other meaning, for example, um, if I want my shock sensor to actually only work as a door window contact, then I would have chosen for it to be a door window contact only, right? Not a shock sensor uh, because it has a read switch. And, and, and I can change the sensor input from the read switch to the terminals and the EOL and, and, and so forth, right? Uh, or, uh, of course, I want it to be a shock sensor only. Okay, no big deal, I can do that, save. Or door window M means multifunction. So if I have already added, I've already added the shock through auto learn, I, I then also want the shock to work with the read switch or the terminals. Uh, you can't have both, um, and they, they can't be three separate zones. So we can do two separate zones. Uh, same ID, okay, no big deal. 
but I would change this door window M because I also am using that as an open close on the window. Uh, and, and, and then, of course, I can change the input of the read. Uh, you know, I can make it to read switch or EOL or whatever it may be. Change the sensor group. Is it, does it have a delay? Is it an instant perimeter? Probably this one, right? And then add new. So, so now I have that shock device uh, on two separate zones, one with the open close read or terminals and the other with uh, the actual shock vibration uh, function, okay? So, so I just wanted to poke on that. And, and, and with just the interest of time here, we'll save the questions here to the, to the end. I'll, I'll take 15 minutes and then we'll do five minutes of questions. So, um, so, so that's kind of you know, one of those one-off things, but for the most part, you know, you'll notice that when you auto learn or pair a PowerG device, it will it will give you the devices you know uh, settings or limitations uh, on the, the the panel here right see my 109 sticker is that uh, coin uh, battery operated device it doesn't have terminals so I don't see terminals right um, if I wanted for example uh, Guinness 130 you see I have the motion sensor the type sensitivity level. Um, what what type of group? Meaning, is it a, is it uh, does it arm to stay mode and away mode, or both, or neither? Uh, is it instant, or does it have a delay? And then, of course, my high traffic shutdown, uh, which is the detection, right? While my panel is disarmed, uh, high traffic meaning you know high traffic if it's constantly detecting motion, uh, or in a place where it would may constantly detect motion. Do I want it to continue to detect motion and therefore chewing the batteries uh, much sooner, right? So I can change this uh, setting as well. So, so you'll notice just as your device pops up, you'll have uh, certain functions and, and so forth on here. The other is, I'm just gonna say this uh, real quick. Let's see, for example, 400. Um, with, the, with the sirens, right, you'll see I have sensor group siren, okay, no big deal. Will it, I can sound my entry exit beeps off or on. Uh, the chimes, it will also chime off or on, right? Uh, the volume of the chimes and beeps uh, and so forth. Okay, and then of course the name. So you do have, a, you know, a decent amount of flexibility and all these things have come over time through software updates, okay? So so jumping, uh, I'm gonna hit on software updates real quick and then our our system uh, tests, and then and then we'll call it good here. But um, through the wizard, you're you're presented with this. Uh, you know, as you mentioned, kind of last time, this setup wizard. I'll just launch this real fast. When you pull it out of the box, you have this setup wizard. Um, depending on your region uh, or or just your language, you can change uh, the language uh, of the panel right from the start. And then, of course, I select start, and, th and this will walk me through all of these items. Right? You can see network check system adding my security devices the sensor test adding the panel glass break you know all of these things and then it says software update at the end and then there's a page that says mobile app which is a qr code that you can scan with the customer's phone and it will take them to whatever app or google play store to download the alarm.com app okay so software updates a big thing right so i'm going to exit here and and uh go to this software update page. So at the end of the wizard, your panel is going to look for a software update. Uh, let's go here. And, and there are a few different ways to uh, update a panel. Uh, there is over the Wi-Fi network. Uh, so if your panel is on the Wi-Fi network, uh, of course you would want it to be to get that dual path communication as well but you would select uh, upgrade using network. It will look for the latest patch that's available and download that latest software version, okay? And, and, and also because it's, it's uh, on the, the network, of course, you can push from alarm.com. And, and by pushing in from alarm.com, what I mean is on alarm.com, you can select the panel or a, a host of panels, a batch of panels, and essentially by saying yes send the update what's happening is alarm.com is telling the panel to talk to the qualsys server or jci server to download the appropriate software update so it's not that alarm.com hosts the software and so forth it's kind of like a virtual uh, command right telling the panel to go get the software uh, update sorry that's annoying 
so there is that way, upgrade using network, okay? The other is upgrade using SD card. So, the, you know, the biggest difference here is time. So depending on the homeowner's network, uh, you know, they have slow download speed, you know, this is going to take a little bit longer. But, you know, with, a, with an okay, I'd say an average, like general, download speed you're looking total time to download plus install and reboot and come back online you're probably i would say 12 13 minutes somewhere in there uh for that whole process uh you know faster network i did I actually did one this morning it took you know i have fast internet it took me four minutes to you know do the whole process the the sd card is that micro sd card you can have the software on the SD card, and we host this on our dealer site, right? So you can all get access to this, ask uh, Jeremy McLaren and, and Tomer and Paul. Um, but we host that software, you can load it on an SD card for your installers, for yourself, and you slide it in the side. You don't leave the SD card there, you slide it in the side, uh, you select upgrade using SD card instead of upgrade using network, and the file is there already. So there's nothing to download from the internet, right? So it just pulls that file to the panel and it says, are you ready to install? Press okay, the panel will reboot. Will reboot. Press okay, pull out your SD card and away you go. You're talking like you've just chopped out all of the download uh, time that it takes from the, uh, uh, you know, from the customer's network. The other is a patch tag, okay? What patch tag means, and, and in the UK this is, and, and in Europe right now this is common, and, and this goes with whenever we lease, release a new software update, we take a very slow controlled approach before we just kind of open the door and then we've just caused thousands of panels to break, um, you know, or tens of thousands of panels. We don't, we don't want that to happen. As, as you know, developing in labs and, you know, even with beta programs with software and so forth until you get into you know, big numbers, that's when you start seeing things uh, for all of those different use cases um, come out of the woodwork. So what happens is, let's say, so for example, coming up, there is a 2.5.4 software update here in the next like week, week and a half, okay? So um, what happens is we will give a patch first, which will be some type of thing, you know, like something like this, probably IQ panel 2.5.4, right? And and I would select okay. And, and the reason we do this is is being able to control the the update process. Fewer people are entering that patch, and we can see from our side with support and on their server, you know, how are all the updates going? Are there any issues in the field, et cetera, et cetera? And then and then as time goes on. We, we allow it to be downloaded easier and and in bulk uh, batches through alarm.com. And again, we continue to watch to make sure that there are no uh, issues. So what happens when, when you enter this patch here, I select okay, nothing happens, right? I then select upgrade using network. This pressing this upgrade using network always references the patch tag field. So, if I have something there, it's going to specifically tell the panel to look for this file. If there's nothing there, then the panel is just going to generically try and look for something newer, and we control that. So if the, the 254 update is available via patch only, then selecting upgrade using network without the field being uh, populated the panel still will not find anything, although 254 is technically available, but via patch only, okay? Um, sorry, all, all the long-winded stuff. Um, lastly, uh, system tests, okay? Um, a whole host of tests. Uh, Wi-Fi test, won't spend too much time. This is not a download test, okay? This is a local network test with their router, uh, so the speed between the router and the panel, not actual internet download, okay? Um, cellular test, right? So I can come down here and, of course, uh, run a cell test. Uh, it will go out and talk to alarm.com. Uh, and okay, my cellular path was tested successfully. Perfect. So I have a comm test. And here's my IMEI. It's connected to a tower. Here's my signal strength. How many bars, as well as in the DBM uh, and ASU levels? 
uh, this is grayed out. This is not available for, for anyone really anymore. I don't know if alarm.com continues to make that device. That requires an additional uh, card. And then we have uh, Z-Wave tests. Okay, I'm, I'm going to come back to this one in a second uh, because I have better screens on the left side. I, I, and, and same thing, uh, yeah, with the, with the Z-Wave test. We, we already talked about Power G test. There's panel glass break. Um, you know, we didn't talk too much about this today or, or at all, really. Uh, last week, we talked about the panel uses its microphones uh, and uh, can be used as a panel glass break detector. Um, in some situations, uh, you know, I won't go super crazy into there. But for example, to test the uh, glass break, you can run a test. I can clap and see this goes yellow. That's telling me that the microphones are working, right? Now, if I had, I don't have one here. If I had a glass break tester or, uh, uh, let me pull up on this side over here. Um, a, a file which we host again on our uh, you know dealer marketing portal a file that i can play on my phone that yellow circle will go green telling me okay the panel can tell the difference between um you know general sound and then the sound of glass breaking and then there is the the grass the glass break alarm test mode and, and i would select start here and what happens is to get the signal to go through to the central station, um, <clears throat> it's essentially for 15 minutes making the microphones more sensitive during that 15 minute arming period. Uh, so that way it's easier to trip the glass break because outside of those 15 minutes, uh, it's not that it's difficult, it's that the algorithm is built very, very specifically to detect uh, very specific frequencies that we have Goodness, we've done chambers. Our CEO has been, you know, baseball bats to glass and rocks and bricks and different types of glass. So capturing all these sounds and building algorithms. Uh, so that way we don't have all of these uh, false alarms from dogs barking and so forth. So that makes it a little difficult sometimes uh, to sound off the alarm through, you know, by, by triggering the glass break detector through, through the panel microphones. So by coming here and putting it in this 15 minute test mode, it just makes it uh, right in test mode for the next 15 minutes, makes it more sensitive. There's the dual path test, right? This will uh, check over uh, my Wi-Fi, my cellular, we, we checked as well, path to alarm.com. Data cards test. Um, so I have a few cards in here, as I mentioned, I'm in North America. So I have this Z-Wave run and I can uh, see, see my Z-Wave card is working. Now we do all this in the wizard as well. So at the beginning of the wizard, we run all these tests, but if you're running into issues, uh, you know, your Z-Wave devices aren't, aren't enrolling, you know, you've tried everything, you've talked to us, you know, try running this. Uh, maybe it says fail, reboot the panel, power back up, it, it should, you know, reinitialize that card, right? So that's a good indicator. Okay, so uh, and and then and then panel test. This I can run all or run individually, uh, just all the different kind of functions on the panel and all the processes. Uh, you know, is the battery okay? Right, please wait. Testing the battery, uh, the LED. Right, pass. Good. 10 a.m. Uh, and so forth. Okay, so so jumping uh, over here real fast, and then and then we'll open up to questions here. Um, I'm going to hop down to our, uh, our Z-Wave tests, okay? Um, so I start, uh, okay, so I talked about uh, networking with Z-Wave, right? It is a mesh. So there's a handful of tests. And, and the only reason why I'm showing you on here, just I have uh, a few better graphical uh, pages than what I have on my panel, because I have a few devices on my panel. There is Rediscover Network. We do this in the wizard as well. After you've added all your Z-Wave devices, there's a, the, the option to optimize or rediscover the network, right? And create that mesh. You can come in here manually. Uh, in, in, in the uh, Z-Wave tests, right? Same thing, here's my rediscover network, right? I can select these devices and hit rediscover and it will start looking and, and create that mesh. Or one individually if I want. If one failed or is not working, I can run one individually. The other is neighbor info. 
so again over over here right hit back neighbor info right which is being able to see the devices that a an individual device may be networked with or talking to right because we have this big spider web this will tell me well is it, you know that that device is having issues it's it's you know it's lagging it only works 30 percent of the time the customer's ticked what's going on well does it see any other devices right is it is it is it actually you know in the network and so i can come and see on the neighbor info um and i can select you know select the view as it shows here it says okay well yeah my light can see the front door or my light can see the door the bedroom light the thermostat etc cetera, etc cetera. or not or maybe it's completely empty okay well there's my problem and then and then we'll continue on right we'll continue on with i'm going to jump right here to uh the diagnostics which if i go back it is this z-wave diagnostic page right here so what happens is we have this very cool page and this whoops this shows all of my devices all of these black dots okay that are my z-wave uh, devices front entry light smart socket living room thermostat garage door garage door you know lights and so forth and all of them are green or dotted green meaning according to the key right if i select the key on the panel uh, are either strong or normal signal and normal is fine right I do have some inactive devices, so I could look at those, say, well, is it because the batteries are dead or are they too far away? So if the batteries are dead, okay, that's one problem. If I do have good batteries, the lock works, I can come into my neighbor info again, see if the lock sees any other devices, it doesn't, right? And that way, then I can go back to my rediscover network, select the lock itself and hit rediscover and see if that pops up and gives me uh, a result um, rather than a failed state. And then I can run this again, and then I will see my lock kind of more included uh, in the uh, Z-Wave uh, network, right? So all of these tests at the end of the day, and, and I'll leave these questions here, this is my last uh, uh, input, is all of these tests, the Z-Wave tests, the PowerG, you know, all these things uh, are for you as installers to, create a lasting good experience for your client meaning you, you you know these tools are typically things that maybe some you have had maybe some most some you may not have had like this said wave test but that's a you know that's a frequency that's a technology just like many others that you can't see right you, you have no idea that you kind of throw your hands up and say i don't know why it's not working maybe i'll move it or maybe i'll just try this you're kind of running around in circles so we're, so we're giving you these tools to make sure you don't have to come back right that that the customer is left with a good a good working not just working today but tomorrow and the next five years or whatever it is that they're not going to have those problems so you know I, I encourage you all to you know uh, uh, this is recorded you can watch it again um, reach out to Paul, uh, Jason uh, Upton as well, a local technical account manager um, for perhaps individual training for your installers, uh, more information. Uh, we are more, 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 more than happy to assist you all. So, Jer, that is uh, it for me. Sorry, I went right to the last minute. Fantastic, Jeremy. And I really appreciate the time and the detail and things like that. You know, I love these Z-Wave tests and the, you know, the sensor tests especially because it, it gives me the ability to get it right before I leave. You know, if I'm an installer walking in the home, you know, the last thing I want to do is, you know, be bombarded by, you know, customers calling me and say, hey, this isn't working now. It was working when you were here, but it's not working now. Can you come back and fix it? You know, and if there's a way to make sure that it's working and perfect and, and functioning before you leave, you know, this gives you the visibility to do that. We, we oftentimes call this making the invisible visible. Wireless can be tricky. And whether it's Z-Wave or it's PowerG or something else, you know, Wi-Fi, et cetera, not knowing what's going on makes it challenging. We've worked very hard to build some tools that will make your job even easier and faster. You know, we want it to be faster. So um, a couple of good questions in the chat. Um, you know, Graham asked, presumably, you know, we don't have to hide the antenna in the wall in the UK. He was re referencing the, the video you showed earlier. That's correct, Graham. You know, if you have um, that uh you know the uk panel doesn't require that well, uh yeah, doesn't mount antenna. yep 
So there is no there is no antenna for you, uh, Graham. You you will not see that yeah, white. It was a, it was a radio that was installed in the legacy North American panels, and that video was made for the North American you know install. So um, Eric has a good question. Wants to know the format of the software up to upload the file extensions, etc. That's actually something that when you go onto uh, the dealer portal, and I put the link to that um, dealer portal in the chat. So if you don't have access already, you should definitely get that. There's some great support information. There's great documentation. Lots of online training. Lots of uh, you know software downloads, technical downloads, uh, marketing downloads, video content, etc. So you should definitely get access to that portal. But you'll be able to see um, the link to that in there. And there's actually several files in a zipped folder that are part of that. Uh, and you'll load that onto your SD card and do it. And again, most in most software updates. The goal is to do them all over the air instead of through a patch tag or through, a, through an SD card local um, update, just because it's you know it's a lot easier when you simply just say check for update and the panel does it all over the air. So um, one other comment was actually from Jason. Um, he said explaining a shock uh, can be two zones could be confusing for customers. Uh, maybe they try and roll a contact as an entry exit and the shock as as an away delay. You know, part of me says that could be confusing, but if you understand it, it also provides you with some extra flexibility. And I think if you, you know, know the, the capabilities and limitations of a particular device, and this applies to almost any device, you can really unlock its potential and do different things with it. I'll give you a couple examples. In my house, I've got some sensors that I do as um, local only, and they are not part of the security system. I've got a door sensor on the closet where we keep our chemicals for, uh, cleaning the house and every time that little closet is opened up I hear chemical closet open and I created a custom name and I have an alert set up so that if that closet is left over for more than a minute I get a text message instantly and now if a kid were going in there and, and getting into that area and, and messing with chemicals I'll know about it right away and I can go address it uh, we do the same thing for our medicine cabinet we've got another door window sensor on a downstairs um, storage room where you know you kind of have to fumble in the in the dark for the light well instead we have it made so that when you open up the door the sensor on the door says door is open and it triggers a, a rule that turns on the z-wave light bulb in there so now when i open the door the light turns on automatically and we've got another rule that says when the door is closed you know turn that light back off again so i never have to fumble for a light switch anymore i open the door get what i need close the door again and leave never touching light switches so there's some really cool things that if you understand all the different group types that is that the uh the sensors can have you can create some really cool automations and really cool behaviors for your customers um you know within the system so really great participation today really appreciate everyone's participation on the polls the questions you're asking you know participating and listening today again this it has been recorded we will post that on our youtube page, channel later today and after we close this down, there will be a short survey. We would appreciate you taking that survey and just giving us some feedback about how we did and things we can improve on. Jeremy, thanks for all the time and work today and preparing all this, this content. And just a reminder for everyone, next week we've got our final in this four-part series uh, of a, an intro to IQ Panel talking about tips and tricks you can use for marketing the IQ Panel. And I'll be hosting that. Um, and we'll be talking about social media. We'll be talking about content on the dealer portal you can download for free and ways you can make your website and social media and sales materials really, really powerful as you go out and continue to market this solution. Thank you again to everyone. Have a safe and happy evening. And we will talk to you hopefully next week.